Good morning. Hello, everybody. Good morning, Caesar. Wishing everyone a great morning. Please let me know if you can hear me. Good morning. I am coming to you live from Austin, Texas. I'm a real estate agent in Austin, Texas. My name is Melanie Ginsberg. And today we're going to be going over email marketing for real estate agents. Hello, Ennison. Is that how you pronounce your name? Um, I'm super, super excited to be with you all today talking about email marketing. I love email marketing. I actually um, ran my own email marketing agency before I got my real estate license. And now it is an honor and a pleasure to teach all of you guys how to do real estate, um, excuse me, how to do email marketing for your real estate business because it's an amazing way to work with your prospective clients and turn them into clients and give your clients a better experience. So if you're watching this now, let me know, are you still studying for your real estate exam or have you passed already? I personally used prep agent to binge study for the Texas exam uh, last year and thanks to Joe and prep agent, I passed. And now agent school is here for you to help you with all of your marketing and social media marketing and email marketing. Shani, congrats on passing your Ohio exam. Super, super exciting. Still studying, passed a month ago. Still studying, awesome. If you're still studying, good for you. It's really smart with marketing. I actually started marketing before I passed my test. Like you guys, you're just getting a jump start. It's never too soon to start talking about real estate with your sphere to set up your systems and stuff because then once you pass, you can hit the ground running. Um, and especially real estate, they say that there's a 40 to 60 day mm, like growth period, <laughs> I guess you can call it, where the people that you're talking to today, they might not turn into clients. You know, the, the seeds that you're planting today won't bloom for 40 to 60 days in real estate. Alicia, congrats on passing in Florida. That is super, super exciting. Um, so yeah, anyway, you guys are ahead of the game and I'm proud of you all. And if you're still studying, good luck. You're in the right place. If you're watching Agent School, you probably watch Prep Agent and that will definitely help you pass. And if you're learning about email marketing, this will help you dominate your real estate business once that um, once you pass your test and get your license. So for those of you just hopping on, my name is Melanie Ginsberg. Again, I used to run my own marketing agency where I specialized in email marketing. And now that I'm a real estate agent, I use email marketing to help my clients in Austin, Texas. And today I'm going to teach you all about how to use email marketing uh, for your real estate business. So let's dive in. If you have any questions, this is live, please um, leave your questions or comments in the chat and I will do my best to get back to you. Um, I can see everything you're saying. So hello everyone. To begin, we're gonna just go over the difference between regular email and email marketing. So regular email is just an email that you send to one person basically. So, hey Bob, I'd be happy to show you 123 Main Street, how's Saturday afternoon? In this example, you're talking to a buyer um, and they want to see a house and it's just a one-on-one -on -one dialogue that you're having. Email marketing, on the other hand, is typically automated and therefore it's mass emails that you're sending to many people, although it reads like you're sending it to one. So in this case, it'd be like, hey Bob, I know you're quite, not quite yet ready to sell, so here are a few tips to prepare your house. In this example, Bob is someone that you spoke to a while ago about selling his house and he didn't want to sell it just yet, but you're using email marketing as a way to keep in touch with Bob because then when he is ready to sell, uh, you're the agent that he chooses. So there are many, many benefits of email marketing and I kind of just hinted at one of them, um, which is to stay top of mind. This is really important both for direct business, so in that example, if Bob wants to sell his house, but also for referrals, because Bob probably knows many, many people, and maybe some of them want to buy or sell real estate, and if you're in Bob's email, you know, once a month or once a week or whatever, and Bob knows you as the real estate agent in your city, then if anyone ever asks him about real estate, he can be like, oh yeah, I remember that person, 
they send really awesome emails to me. They really sound like they know what they're doing. So that leads us into the second reason why email marketing is amazing. It establishes you as the expert. So people, you know, buying or selling a home is a really big deal. And they want to know that they're choosing a real estate agent who knows what they're talking about. And I know that you all know what they're talking about, what you're talking about, but the, your prospective clients don't yet know how smart and amazing you are. So you have to tell them. You have to tell them that you've just spent months studying for your real estate exam and you know all the definitions of all the vocabulary words. And you need to tell them that you know, you know all of the best ways to sell a house or how to work with the buyer um, and that you will do anything to, to make sure that they have a pleasant experience with you. So sending emails about real estate and about customer service can really help um, create that comfort with your prospective clients so they know that they will be taken care of when they choose to work with you. Uh, which is also kind of the third reason, which is it builds a relationship. Real estate is a relationship business. It is a personal business. When they choose you as a real estate agent, you know they will be working a lot with you personally. Um, so they want to know who you are. They want to they want to trust you and like you and feel like they know you. So having these automated emails helps build that relationship. Um, we have a question. Do you have all emails that go to your brokerage emails automatically forward to a personal email? So you have a complete record in case you change brokers. Gabriel, that's not a bad idea. It is quite common for real estate agents to switch brokers. Um, so you could do that. Or if you do plan on switching, you can, um, like for example, my brokerage has a CRM system, which is a software that helps me with emails. That's included in our, you know, I get that as being an agent with them. And if I ever wanted to switch, I can just export my contact list from there and download that and save that, um, if that makes sense. So then, so then your contacts are still your contacts. But yeah, that's definitely a good idea, something to be aware of that you wanna make sure, you, you know, making your, email list, which is something that I'll get to in a minute, is something that you own and that's not through your brokerage. So that will travel with you no matter which brokerage you work for, which is a fourth benefit of email marketing is that it creates your personal book of business. So good question, Gabriel. Uh, we're going to go over some email marketing keywords right now in case you were just saying, what is a list? Why did, what did she mean when she said that? Um, I will tell you. <laughs> so. The, the main thing for email marketing is subscribers and list. Um, subscribers are people who have chosen to receive marketing emails from you. Maybe you're familiar with subscribers um, with YouTube, like if you have all subscribed to the Prep Agent channel or if you have subscribed to the Agent School channel. And if you haven't subscribed, you should right now because this channel is awesome. It's gonna help you a lot in your real estate career. So just like you have YouTube subscribers, you can have email subscribers. And those are people that have raised their hand and said that they want to receive emails from you. Um, and the people, your subscribers make up your list. So when I was talking to Gabriel and I said, you can download that list, that is just a list of all the people who said that they want to receive those emails from you. If this is making sense, say got it in the comments. Um, Cause I, like I said, I have a lot of experience with email marketing. I wanna make sure that this is making sense for all of you and that this is beneficial. So let me know. Got it. Okay. The subject line is the part of the email that you read before opening the full email. So that's the part where you're basically giving the subject, the subject of what's in the email. This is really important and I'm gonna talk more about that in a little bit. Um, the pre-header or the preview text is after the subject line. So the subject line is usually in bold and it's the left words and then the preview is on the right and it gives you, like the title suggests, a preview of what's going to be in the email. The body is the content of the email. It's basically the letter inside the envelope. So if you, you know, email, if you think about it as like a letter coming in the mail, a physical letter, the subject line and the preview would be on the envelope on the outside and the body would be the letter inside of the envelope. Open rate, okay, open rate is the percentage of people who open your email. And you want this to be a high number because you wanna make sure that the emails that you're sending out are being open and read, you know? So if your list, to throw in some vocabulary words, if your list is 100 people 
and you send out an email to all of those 100 people and 50 people open it, your open rate is 50%. Um, your click-through rate is the percentage of people who click a link in your email. So with that same example, if 50 people opened the email, but only 10 people clicked the link in the email, then your click-through rate is going to be 10% because it was 10 people out of your whole list, which was 100. Spam is, maybe you've seen your spam folder, um, when you send to someone who has not elected to receive it. This is really important because not only do you not want to bother people, but you want to make sure that your everything is you know within compliance. So you don't want to be sending emails to people who don't want them. Um, if you do this, it could get sent to spam, which is described as a bounce rate. So the bounce rate is the percentage of the emails that never even made it to an inbox, likely because it was it was flagged as spam. Conversion rate is the percentage of people who followed the call to action in your email. And a call to action, I will add that here, um, a call to action is the explicit instructions or command given, yeah, we can just call it that. So a call to action would be like schedule a walkthrough or respond to this email or give me a call or forward this email to a friend. You know, these are all, it, command is a very strong word, but it's basically just telling someone to do something. You're calling them to action. You're telling them to take action, whether that's, you know, schedule a walkthrough or call me back or respond to this email. So the conversion rate is the percentage of people who do that thing. An email campaign is a single email or a series of emails designed to achieve a certain goal, such as encouraging people to attend an open house. There are many, many goals that you can have with your email campaigns, especially in real estate. Um, do you guys have any ideas about what different goals could be? I gave you the first example, attend an open house. What are other goals do you think um, these email campaigns could have? Um, yeah, another goal could be watch this YouTube video if you have a YouTube channel. That could be a goal of this series of emails. Your goal could be give me a call if you want that, you know, if you say, hey, I know you're not ready to sell your house yet, but give me a call if you have any questions. The goal could be to get a seller client and, you know, to get a new listing and have them list their home with you. The goal could be to get a new buyer client and have them you know, become, <laughs> become a buyer client. So there are many, many goals that you can have for each email campaign, and it's important to have a different email campaign for all of your different goals. Yeah, let's do a Zoom meeting. Great, Caesar. that is another goal. Let's do a Zoom meeting, and I can learn more about you and what your goals are, you know, what your needs are in real estate. So there are many, many goals. A landing page is a single web page that you can usually collect use it as a way to collect emails um, you know I'm getting I'm seeing a couple questions about subscribers having a landing page that collects emails and is connected to your CRM which is the software or or just the email marketing software uh, really saves you a lot of time and it's a way to build your email list in a way where everyone you everyone is voluntarily on your list which is really important so very good segment into how to build your list. Um, you can reach out to your sphere of influence and you know tell them, hey, I just got my real estate license and I'm going to be sending out some emails about real estate. Would you be interested in joining my email list? Let me know. Again, always ask for permission. You can have an open house sign in. For me, the CRM KV Core that I use that I get with my brokerage um, they have an app that I can, I usually put it up on an iPad at open houses that I do and people can sign in and it asks for their name and their email address and then it automatically syncs and connects to my emails so they are added to my contact book. You can have an email opt-in on your website. That's like the landing page that I was talking about. So you can, you know, either have something pop up or just say, hey, I send out, I send out 
facts about real estate once a month, let me know if you're interested in learning. Please sign up below. It's a good idea to offer something in exchange for signing up. So this um, is a, does a few things. One, there's something called the law of reciprocity, and it means that if you do something nice for someone, they're more likely to do something nice for two, nice for you too, in exchange because of reciprocity. So if you if you say, hey, if you sign up, I'll give you a free home buying guide, they will be more likely to sign up. One, because they feel like you're give, you, you're doing them a favor, so they want to do you a favor, but also it's something valuable that they want. Instead of just saying something kind of nebulous, like, hey, please sign up, if you say something specific that they will get for signing up, and it doesn't need to be a PDF guide like that, you can say, sign up and I'll send you real estate tips every single week. And then that's the value that you're offering. You're offering the real estate tips, you know? If you're a perspective, like if I'm someone and I'm looking to buy a house and I know nothing about the home buying process, that would be extremely valuable to me to learn about it through emails, through your emails. And then the value to you is that when I'm ready to buy a house, I'm gonna be like, wow, I've been reading this person's emails for the last three months. I definitely wanna work with them because I know that they're awesome and I know that they're gonna take good care of me. So offering value is always a good idea in any kind of marketing that you're doing. All right, here are some general tips. Uh, I see we have a question. I am not licensed yet. If I start submitting emails to build relationships, I would have to use my personal email instead of my brokerage email. How do you re recommend I do that? Um, great question. I would say you can start collecting emails. Um, like how I said here when you were working with your sphere, just reaching out to people and saying, hey, I'm studying to get my real estate exam. Once I get my license, I plan to... Um, you know, send out a weekly newsletter or a monthly newsletter or whatever it is that you're planning. And then you can create a list, you know, put it in an Excel sheet. And once you do have that brokerage email, you can upload that as a, you can upload that to your email marketing platform and then send out an email. SOI is sphere of influence. Sorry. Sphere of influence. So that's everyone that you know. So, okay, some general tips. Um, use names. Even though email marketing, the benefit, one benefit to you of email marketing is that you can send lots of emails at once. Make it feel like you're writing just to one person. So um, if you can, you know, most email marketing platforms will have something where you can say, for example, first name, or sometimes it looks like this, F name, or sometimes like this, F name. Basically, that auto fills it in. So to you, it looks like you're saying, hey, first name, but when I'm opening the email, I'm reading, hey, Melanie, because your email marketing soft software will know that my name is Melanie, and it will auto-populate it. So that is just a fun little trick, and it also makes it way more personal. Um, write your subject line in all lowercase. This isn't a personal preference because, like I said, even though you know that these are all, this is just an automated email, you want your reader to feel like they just got an email written to them. And I don't know about you, when I write emails, like to my friends and family, I, I slack a little bit on the grammar and I don't always capitalize my subject line. So I think it makes it seem more personal that way. But again, that's just my personal preference. Um, use emojis, but be careful with this because some email marketing softwares won't have the emoji show up. And, and it depends a little bit on the software that you're using and also a little bit on the device and the, you know, if it's a Gmail or Yahoo or whatever account that the receiver is getting. So if, you, if the emoji is necessary for the sentence or for the phrase, I wouldn't use that. For example, if the subject line is want to buy a house emoji, let's say for some of those people, if the house emoji doesn't show up, then it just looks like want to buy a blank question mark. And that doesn't make sense, you know? But if you say want to buy a house and then you have the house emoji, let's say for whatever reason the house emoji doesn't show up, the sentence still says want to buy a house. And that makes sense. Y'all with me? Say yeehaw, I'm, I'm in Texas. 
Uh, y'all just slipped out. I grew up in Minnesota, but I've been in Texas for two years, and I think y'all is a great phrase. So if you're still with me, say yeehawks. I think it's fun. <laughs> Makes sense. Awesome. So also use playful punctuation, multiple question marks, uh, you know, like you just saw with me here. Be fun and playful. Um, it's still from you. Like you still want to show your person, your personality. Um, and it will make people feel like I said, one of the main reasons of doing email marketing is to build a relationship and you want to have your personality show through in that relationship. So you want to feel like you're writing to a friend. So whether that means saying y'all or, you know, being punny, I love puns, be, be who you are, be authentic, be your authentic self. That, I'm going to put that as another one. Um, incorporate time-sensitive words because, again, the subject line is extremely important to get people to open it. If no one opens your email, it doesn't matter what's in your email because they'll never read it. So even if you say, hey, I'm, I'm giving away a house for free or something like that, which is crazy, if they never open your email, they'll never know that. So um, if you do time-sensitive words like coming soon or don't miss this or today only, stuff like that, um, then they'll be more likely to open it. And again, tease their curiosity. So what's something, like I'm sure, think about your own email inbox. What are subject lines that you've read and you've been like, wow, I have to open this because I'm so curious about what's inside. That's the kind of subject line that you wanna use. And just a side tip, um, if you want to subscribe to other email lists as research, then you can see what subject lines they're sending and use that as inspiration for your own subject lines. And not just subject lines, their whole email marketing. You know, look at what other real estate people are doing and say, oh, well, if they're doing it, it's probably working for them. And then, of course, don't steal it because that's stealing and plagiarism, but be inspired by it. Um, and then the last one, call out your target audience, such as investors in Austin or something like that because then, then they're feeling like you're speaking directly to them and the person reading it would be like, hey, I'm an investor in Austin. I bet this email is extremely relevant to my life and my investing business, so I'm gonna open it. Laura, glad that you're finding this helpful, thank you. Um, in general, write like you're writing to a friend. You know, again, this is about building relationships and even though you're writing emails that will be sent to hopefully hundreds or thousands of people, write as if you're only writing to one person. That's actually a trick that I do when I'm writing these emails. I'll think of one specific person in my head, like, okay, this is for Laura. And I'm like, all right, dear Laura, hey, do you wanna buy a house? Or you know, whatever the email is, but I write it like I'm writing to just that one person, Laura. And then I delete all of the first names and then I reread it and make sure that it would make sense if I send it to hundreds of th or thousands of people. Um, this first name tag is going to be, oops, is going to be a huge benefit um, because again, it makes it feel way more personal. So who remembers what a CTA is? I mentioned it briefly in the beginning. I'll give you a virtual high five if you know it. Um, CTAs are very important for all marketing. Uh, email marketing is just one kind of marketing. This whole YouTube channel is about all kinds of marketing. All marketing should have a CTA. Laura, yay, call to action. Julie, you guys know it. A plus, so many virtual high fives going around for those of you who are paying attention. So each email should only have one call to action, but you should mention it multiple times. This one is tricky because it's really tempting to say, hey, so-and-so, isn't it a beautiful day? Um, here's a new property that I have listed. Let me know if you want to schedule a Zoom call or we can do a showing. Or if you're not interested, please follow me on Instagram and like my business page. And while you're at it, please tell your friends I'm a new real estate agent in Austin, Texas. You know, because we want a lot of things, right? But it's overwhelming and it feels a little greedy if you're, if you're asking for all of those things. You know, marketing, marketing is in essence just having a conversation with someone and if someone knocked on your door and was like hey um i'm out of groceries can i have bread and milk and eggs and peanut butter and jelly you'd be like mm, 
No. But if someone, your neighbor is just like, hey, can I borrow one cup of sugar? You're more likely to do that. You know, it feels more intentional. So include only one call to action for that reason. But also it, um, if you, if you have one call to action and you mention it multiple times, then it's, it's being repeated. So it's more this, you're asking for the same thing over and over again. So as they're reading the email, they're more and more likely to do that thing. Always add a PS. This is my favorite thing. PSs are postscripts at the bottom of the email, you know, after your name. This does a few things. One, if your emails always have a PS, you're psychologically letting your readers know that all of your emails are valuable down to the very last word. Therefore, they will always read all of your emails, you know? PSs are fun. Like when you see it, you're like, oh, this is just a fun little thing. So they'll continue reading your whole email, which is great because you, when, you know, you, these emails are all very intentional and have all important information in them. And I don't know about you, but I open emails all the time and I read the first few sentences and then I don't, I stop reading it. And we don't want people to do that to your email. So if you can, if you can let them know that they should read all the way through to the PS every single time, it will improve your chances of them reading the whole email. You know what I mean? And the PS can be fun. Like if you want to just do a meme in the PS or a little joke, sometimes in the PS I'll do the call to action again. Like, hey, here's that link again. Or, hey, it will just take a second. Please reply to this email. Something like that. Um, but get creative and have fun. Uh, make the email super, super value packed so your readers want to read them. Remember when I asked you to think about your own inbox and what are the subject lines that make you excited to read? Well, what are the emails that make you excited to read? What are the emails that when you see it in your inbox, you're like, oh my God, I can't wait to read this new blog post or I can't wait to read this email full of market trends in my city or you know whatever it is. Make, make that how your readers feel about your emails. And like I said, catchy subject line is more opens and more opens is more reads, more reads is more prospective clients for you to work with. So um, make sure, you know, even though the subject line is theoretically the shortest and the easiest part, make sure that you're spending a lot of time, you're being thoughtful with the subject line. Okay, so now here are a couple types of automatic email campaigns that you can set up. Newsletters are my favorite. They're the easiest ones to begin with. Um, it's basically just anything with a set frequency, such as weekly or monthly, and you're saying, okay, I'm gonna send you a letter full of news. That's what a newsletter is. So it could be your latest listings, upcoming events, a recent blog post, the latest real estate trends in your area. You know, it could be anything, you know, it doesn't need to be a recent blog post. It could just be an email with facts about real estate or anything that you think would be helpful to your audience. At the end of each newsletter, I suggest asking a question or inviting engagement so that people respond to your email. Because email marketing is pretty one-sided. You know, you're sending emails, sending, 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 sending. But the whole point of this is to create a conversation with these prospective clients. So if you ask them a question, people will be more likely to respond. Even if the question, you know, let's say your newsletter is like, let's say your newsletter is sent out every Monday and you mention what a, a movie that you saw this weekend. You could say, what's your favorite movie? Or what's the last movie you saw? Or something like that. It doesn't need to be about real estate. But then they're responding and they're thinking, oh, I'm talking to Jade. I know Jade. Jade is my friend. I trust Jade, you know, and you're building that relationship with them. Jade is cool. We, we like the same movies. And then when they are ready to buy or sell real estate, they're thinking, oh, yeah, I remember Jade. Jade and I really hit it off. I would like to sell my house with Jade. So anytime you can create engagement, do so. And most of the time, just ask them. Invite people to talk to you, and they'll be like, okay, yeah, cool. I want to talk about what movie I saw this weekend. Um, a welcome email sequence is usually one to three emails right after they sign up for your email list. So that's if you have a landing page with an email opt-in and they sign up, they'll get an email automatically that's basically saying, hey, welcome to this email. Here's what you can expect. You know, I send emails once a month or I send emails every Monday or I, 
don't send emails, <laughs> you know, tell them what to expect and make them feel welcome, get them excited. Some people are really protective over their email inboxes. So say like, hey, thank you so much for subscribing. I'm super excited to have your trust. I can't wait to talk to you more about real estate. And then again, create a conversation, ask them to respond Click a link, share the email. Who do you know who would like an, e an email like this? You know, forward this email to a friend. I like to say something like this. This newsletter is for you, so please let me know how I can best help you. I read and reply to every email, so please take a minute and say hello. This does two things. One, you're creating that conversation. You're nurturing that relationship. You're building that rapport and that bond. And if they respond and ask you specific questions about real estate, you can use that as inspiration for content moving forward. So if someone responds to your email and says, oh my God, I really wanna buy a house but my credit is so bad. Then you're like, okay, if this one person had that question, multiple people probably have that question. I'm gonna write my next blog post or my next email about how to raise your credit. Making sense? So that's the welcome email sequence. Seller follow-ups are someone who has expressed interest in selling their home, but they're not quite ready to work with you. So this keeps the line of communication open and it builds the relationship. This is something, again, you always wanna share value. So share tips about selling, why to use a realtor versus a FISBO, how to decorate your home, you know, maybe remodeling tips, anything like that, that someone who's thinking about selling their home would be like, wow, that's super helpful. This person really knows what they're talking about and when I wanna sell my home, I definitely wanna do it with them. Buyer follow-ups are the same thing, but for buyers, someone that you talk to who one day will want to buy a house, but they're not ready today. Um, just a little fun fact that I learned recently, 97% of leads that you talk to will not be ready to buy today. Um, so just something to keep in mind. That's why they say the first year of real estate is really hard and really frustrating because you'll be talking, if you talk to 100 people, 97 of them won't be ready to buy with you. So this takes, you know, it's a longer sales cycle, but don't give up and don't take it personally. If you're not getting clients right away, don't give up. Just remember, stay consistent, keep, keep building your business slowly but surely, and you'll get there. Um, so yeah, buyer follow-ups, you can give them, tips about investing, tell them why buying is better than renting, or if buying is better for them than renting, talk about mortgage rates, the pre-approval process, like I said before, credit score, stuff like that. Anything that would be helpful for people who are thinking of buying a home. Y'all with me so far? Can I get another yeehaw? <laughs> um, Follow-up and referrals are really good after you've worked with a client. So the, the follow-ups are before, the welcome emails are before, this is after. So after you've worked with a client, check in with them, see how their new home is, etc. Ask them for a testimonial and ask them if they know anyone else looking to buy or sell. You can say, hey, it was such a pleasure to work with you. Uh, you, were such a, you were my favorite client ever. Do you know anyone else who um, is so lovely as you? And you can throw in some compliments to them. Uh, this is a great way to grow your business and also to stay in touch. If they bought with you once, they're, they're likely to buy with you again if they want to buy, you know, if they, assuming they had a good experience, which I'm sure they would because you guys are all awesome. So keep in touch with them on their anniversary. You never know when they are ready to buy or sell again or if they have a friend who wants to buy or sell. Kristen asked, where do you get the information to send? That is a great question. Um, I'm gonna get to that in a little bit. Cecilia, what platforms are y'all using to send out and control all the emails? I use KV Core. Um, it's free with my brokerage and I love it. It's available for everyone. You can use anything. MailChimp is a popular one, Active Campaign, um, Constant Contact. You can honestly just Google like best platforms for real estate emails and I bet you can find lots of blog posts that will tell you the pros and cons of each of those. But I use KV Core and I love it. Um, so the last type of automatic campaign would be um, open house and event announcements. This would be like if you, you know, if you have an open house this coming weekend, you can schedule 
um, an email to go out and invite people to it. You can even schedule multiple emails to invite people to it. Or if you have any in-person events, you know, whether that's if you're teaching about credit score, if you're teaching how to buy your first home, I know some agents that do that. Or if you just want to say, hey, I'll be at this coffee shop. If you ever, if you have any questions about real estate, swing by and I'll be there and I'll answer them. So those are all of the types, not all, those are the, the, those are five types of campaigns that you can use to set up your email marketing. And here are some content ideas. Um, at the base, where you get the information is gonna be from your brain. <laughs> I know that's not a very helpful answer maybe, but you just wanna brainstorm things that would be valuable to these people. And like I said before, Get your inspiration from other people. See what's already working for them. I do this all the time with my content. I'll find you know, the best people on Instagram and look at their posts and see which ones are getting a lot of attention and see which ones I personally am finding helpful. And then I'll say, okay, why is this valuable information? Oh, they're, they're giving a step-by-step -step process about how to you know, find a mortgage lender. Okay, do I know how to find a mortgage lender? And then I'll make my own step-by-step -step process. You know. So you don't have to always reinvent the wheel. There are many, 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 many real estate agents that are doing really successful email marketing. So find them, subscribe to their lists, and just start doing research and see what kind of stuff they're sending. And, you know, for any of your content, really. So I like to repurpose my blog posts or social media posts. I put a lot of time and energy into my social media. And I can just... You, you know, if I make a graphic on Canva, I can just put that into my email marketing and send that out or a blog post. Same thing like, hey, I just wrote this blog post about the top five mistakes that sellers make when selling their houses. Please read this blog post and then you put the link. You can do um, listing announcement, open houses, virtual tours, a day in the life of a real estate agent, you know, things that you think would be fun. You can do local real estate market trends and tips. Tracy, you don't need to worry about taking notes because this will be up on the Agent School channel so you can rewatch this whenever you want. Um, the last thing is client success stories. You can, you can send those out. Remember when I said when you follow up you should ask for testimonials? This is really important. It may feel uncomfortable, but success stories are crucial to growing your business because people want to know that you've been vetted, you know. Think about when you're searching for a product on Amazon, how many of you look for the reviews? Let me know in the comments. I, I look at, I, I read like 20 reviews on Amazon before I buy a product, even though I've never met these people before, even though I've never, I don't even know if we have similar tastes, you know, but I trust what they're saying. So people will feel that way about your real estate business and they wanna see the reviews that other people have worked with you and had a good experience. Um, so if you can collect those and then you share those out, people will feel more confident and more comfortable about working with you. Um, so those are the basics. If you have any other questions, I didn't want to take up too much of your time today, but I love email marketing and I love marketing in general. So if you have any questions, you can find me on Instagram. Ennison said that he likes my post on niches today. Thank you, Ennison. I post other things about marketing as well on my Instagram page. Um, and I, I, like I said, I love talking about marketing. So if you have any, any questions, I am here for you. And I also always read the one-star reviews on Amazon because you never know. You never know. So this has been email marketing. I'll be back here on the Agent School channel. If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, please do. And if you know anyone, any other real estate agents, either if they're studying right now or they've already passed, um, send them this video, send them to the channel and tell them to subscribe because we're trying to help all real estate agents with their marketing and we can only do that by reaching them. So share this if you can. Good luck to those of you studying on your exam. To those of you that have already passed, good luck with your email marketing. Um, looking forward to being in touch with all of you and have an amazing, amazing day.